So let's begin with the big issue, shall we? Is this the opportunity to get back in? This is a pretty exciting opportunity for investors. Opportunities for investors. This is the catching, falling, nice scenario. To get into the market. Moving assets from developed markets into into uh, Asian markets. We know that things look cheap. It's time to go shopping. We don't know quite how cheap they are. Buy into this weakness. In the short term, we're not yet buyers. It's too early, I think, to make any big decisions to buy. We expect there'll be some more near-term weakness. There is just too much uncertainty at this point in time. It's not time to go back in and buy yet. This is something that needs to play out over a longer time frame. It really depends on whether you take that longer or that shorter term view. We have to see more panic selling uh, or peak. It's very important to look at the fundamentals and or in fact some resolution of the virus it seems unlikely. So the key question is the worst behind us. Joining me around the table I'm pleased to say is Troy Gersky of Skybridge Capital, Tom Tisouris of Strategus and Ben Mandel of JP Morgan Investment Management. Troy let's begin with you. Your take on all of this please. Well look I mean it's really short circuited uh, meaning the coronavirus has short circuited the bullish trend that we had coming into the year and we looked at it obviously multiples are stretched but in the backdrop you have the Fed pumping an enormous amount of liquidity so we did expect multiples to trend higher I think it's really difficult to say now I mean all you can say technically is you've gone back to about the 50-day moving average uh, you're well above other bottoms that we've hit in the past um, and so it looks like a choppier market range and I think people should be a little bit cautious right now Tom you agree yeah I would say the same thing I think also uh, with agreeing with a lot of the speakers who, who were coming up earlier there sentiment hasn't gotten bearish enough to jump back in I think we and also we haven't seen the peak in terms of damage to the, the global economy from this virus when we see that and we see sentiment weaken enough, then it's time to pop back in. Ben, let's get a take from Mohamed El Erin this morning in the Financial Times. He wrote the following. Let's bring that quote up. Investors need to decide if they want to continue to implement an investment playbook that has served them well, or if they want to treat the viral outbreak for what it is, a big economic shock that could derail global growth and shake markets out of their buy-the-dip conditioning. What's your response to that quote? I think the hardest thing in asset allocation uh, is uh, honestly to, to, play, to manage around the base case. OK, and we need to continue to do that. And this is a great example of, I mean, when you have a small probability of something catastrophic, how do you put that into an asset allocation that we had coming into the year that was that was fairly risk on? Uh, you know, that's difficult. You know, if we're talking about the end of the world here, another year of duration is not really going to do it for you. Uh, but our base case has been one that's generally positive. The start, initial conditions were good. You had, you know, the incipient signs of a recovery and growth coming into the year. Uh, as mentioned earlier, you have the, the, the Fed and, and other, you know, Chinese monetary policy, which is a backstop to this. Uh, and I think you have the inherent nature of the shock itself which is you'd expect this to be temporary uh, in nature, right? So we can debate the extent and the depth of it, uh, but the nature of the shock is a transient one. I'm just wondering how convinced you are, Troy, yep. by the V-shaped recovery story that Ben is pushing and many people agree with. So I'm not having a dig at you, Ben. Yeah. It just seems to be the consensus view. Are you convinced by that? Well, not, not quite yet, because again, I mean, we've had a very mild sell-off, right? So, so we think the path is certainly higher, but you could certainly see 2, 3, 4% off in February, March if this continues to spread and we start to see hard economic data impact. I mean, we already have the Boeing issue for U.S. growth. Yeah. Then you look over to Germany. I mean, Germany is basically on its knees, you know, praying for Chinese recovery. We're clearly not going to get that. So to us, it's, it's unwise to make overly aggressive asset allocations today. Stick with the game plan, of course, but, but don't be in a hurry to buy a 3% dip because 3% dip is kind of noise. Tom, the know. issue that I have, and we'll talk about Europe a little bit later, but the issue I have at the moment is that one of the big questions of 2019 is still unresolved. That tug of war between manufacturing, soft and services resilient. The hope coming into 2020 is we would resolve it in a positive way. Are we set to answer that question the other way around in the coming months? I don't think so. I think there's weakness from Boeing. I think the first quarter of 2020 was going to be weak just to begin with. Uh, they were probably going to see a second quarter, which wasn't going to be much better. Now you add this, which is certainly not going to improve business sentiment, business confidence. So I don't see a rebound in manufacturing and business spending right now. And at the same time, you see the consumer, which is slowing a little bit more, a little bit more. And the last thing you would turn to in this situation would be, well, housing. Is housing going to pick up? That may but not right now.